In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use Creo Parametric to create the 3D part that you see here. I can see the dimensions are in millimeters, so I want to begin with the correct template. I'll select New, then Part, Solid, and then I'm going to remove the check mark from the default template. I can also go ahead and give this a name, so I'll just simply call this one Part 1, then click OK. Since I removed the check from default template, I can now choose the appropriate template here. Once again, I'm looking for a metric one. So I'll scroll up and down on my list until I find a millimeter part solid. Then click OK. I started my new part here. I can see my datum planes and I want to begin by drawing the bottom shape. So as we take a look at our detail drawing here, the bottom shape is 64 millimeters by 96 millimeters. It does have a cutout, but we are going to save that for another feature. In addition to being 64 by 96, we can see in the front view that this first shape is going to be 16 millimeters thick. So we'll begin by drawing a 96 by 64 rectangle and extruding it 16 millimeters. So back here in Creo, I will begin by starting a new extrusion and I will place it on the top plane. Next I will sketch my rectangle. I'm actually going to use the drop down next to the rectangle tool and choose the center rectangle. That will allow me to make sure that my datum planes are centered in the middle of this part. I'll go ahead and create my first little rectangle there and middle mouse button to cancel and then adjust my dimensions. So this was a width of 96 and a depth of 64. I'll go ahead and click OK. I'll switch back to my default view orientation here. And for our height, once again, we were going to go 16 millimeters. And then I'll click OK to finish. So that gives me my first feature. The next thing I want to do is create the little cutout here. And I'm doing this in two different steps because that makes it easier to go back into my model history and make any changes or delete a feature if I want to. So I'll begin by starting my extrude tool again and then I will click on the top surface here to create my sketch. I'll do this by creating two shapes. I'll create a rectangle and I'm just going to kind of put it on here align to the right side and then I will create a circle at its midpoint. Then I will use my delete segment tool here in the editing panel to trim out the pieces that I don't need. So that gives me my basic shape. Now I'm ready to go ahead and adjust the dimensioning. So this should have a radius of eight. And then the slot is centered on the part. So I'm just going to create a coincident constraint between the center of this arc and the datum plane running through the middle of the part here. I could of course have done that with a dimension instead. In my original sketch, I can see that the center should be 20 from the right side. So I don't like the default dimension that Creo is giving me. So I'll make my own dimension from the center to the right side and then middle mouse button to place my dimension and then put in my value of 20. It looks like I still have a weak dimension here as I zoom in. I must have accidentally drawn an extra line here, so I'll just simply delete that one. Pretty easy to fix. Now my sketch is fully constrained, so I'll go ahead and click OK, and I'm ready to extrude it. So I'm going to choose the Remove Material option, and then I'm going to flip its direction to go into the part. And currently the depth is OK, it's thicker than the part, but I actually want to change my option to Through All. That way if the thickness of the part changes, the extrusion will always cut completely through it. I'll go ahead and click OK. So that takes care of my first couple of features here. What I want to do next is to create the feature on the left side of the part here. So let's take a look at the original detail drawing here. We can see that this shape goes 64 millimeters up from the very bottom of the part. And we can see that it matches the width of the part, which is also 64. We can see that it has a depth of 16 millimeters, and we can see that it has a curve on one of the corners with a radius of 48. I could draw that curve as a part of my extrusion sketch, but I'm going to use the round command 
to create that shape instead. So back here in Creo, I am going to create a new extrusion on this back surface here. And I'll begin by drawing a rectangle. I'll snap on one of the corners. Then I'll just create a rectangle like so. I'll use my coincident constraint to make the two vertical lines here collinear to each other. Then I can adjust my final dimension. You'll remember that the detail drawing showed me that it was 64 millimeters from the bottom of the part. So I could do the math or I could go ahead and add in my own dimension instead to make that 64 from the very bottom of the part. I'll go ahead and finish my sketch. I can see it is trying to extrude but the wrong direction so I will flip it and then adjust my thickness to the 16 millimeters. Then finish. Once again this corner should have a radius of 48 so I am going to choose my round tool. I'll pick that edge and then I will adjust my radius to 48. Then click OK. Next I'm going to create the rectangular extrusion in this area. As we look at the detail drawing here we can see that the rectangular feature is going to be 40 millimeters wide by 28 millimeters tall and it's going to be extruded a depth of 42. There's also a curved cutout here. I could sketch that in the extrusion but I'm going to create a separate feature for that once again to make it easier to modify or remove later. Back in Creo then I'm going to rotate around to the back of the part here and create a new extrusion on this surface here. Then I will use my rectangle command start in the corner and I'll just arbitrarily place the second point then middle mouse button to cancel. Then I will adjust my dimensions. So once again we said this was going to be a width of 40 and a height of 28. I'll go ahead and finish. Once again it's going the wrong way so I'll flip it and then I will put in the depth of 42 here. Then I'll go ahead and click OK. So now let's look at the curved feature. Once again looking at the detail drawing it is a cutout that's centered on the rectangular feature and has a radius of 12 or a diameter of 24 if you will. So back in Creo I will create a new extrusion on this back surface here. I will come in with my circle command and it should pick up the midpoint for me here. I'll snap to it and then just simply draw my circle. I'm going to be careful not to accidentally create a constraint like I'm doing right here. So I'll just make it smaller or larger. Middle mouse button and then adjust my diameter to 24. I could trim this out so that it's only the bottom of the circle but it's not really necessary. I'll go ahead and click OK and then I will choose to remove material, flip the direction, then change my depth through all. So as you can see the top part is okay, it's not really cutting through any material but I didn't really need to trim it either. I'll go ahead and click OK and there we can see my curved feature. Finally we have the triangular extrusion in this area. As I flip back to my drawing one last time I can see that it snaps to the existing corners and has a depth of 12. So back in Creo I'll simply create an extrusion on the back of the part here and then I will draw in my line to connect those and then to create a closed shape I'll go ahead and draw over these projected edges like so. Then I can go ahead and click OK, flip my direction and then put in the depth value of 12. Then click OK. I'll return to my default orientation here and there we can see the completed part. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you'd like to see some more tutorials using Creo Parametric please subscribe as I will be continuing to create more of these tutorials. Thanks for watching!